Okay, so uh, welcome back everybody to uh, the thermodynamics course again. Uh, we are back after a bit of absence. Uh, so uh, before we left, uh, I think Professor Bhargav had uh, discussed in details about how entropy changes for a closed system. And we will build upon that today and in fact today what we will do is we will look at what happens if we combine the first and the second law. See, so far we have only been talking about these two laws separately, but you know in nature or for any process that occurs around us, uh, I mean these two laws, uh, they, they do not really, you know, uh, they, are, they are not satisfied separately, they are satisfied together. So, both of these laws have to be valid together. So, let us see how uh, or what we can get if we apply uh, the first and the second law together. So, if we combine the two laws. So, our topic today will be combination of first plus second law. This writing is visible, right? Okay. Okay. So, let us consider a very simple scenario. Let us take a system. This is our system. It is a closed system. So, let us write, write down what are the attributes. So, first of all, this has to be a closed system. Second, we will assume that the substance inside the system is simple, compressible and pure. Third, we will assume that this is visible, right? Okay. So, third, we will assume that this uh, system when it, so it can in interact it can have heat interaction and work interaction with the surroundings, but we will assume that the only work interaction that takes place is boundary work. So, there is boundary work only. Also, we will assume that change, so changes in kinetic and potential energy are negligible. So, delta K E and delta P E these are negligible and then these are all simplifying assumptions and then of course, we will assume that the system uh, undergoes whenever the system undergoes a process, the process is quasi equilibrium and uh, internally reversible. So, there are lots of assumptions. So, first of all system has to the system under consideration has to be closed. Uh, the substance uh, has to be uh, simple, compressible and pure. Uh, there can not be any other work other than boundary work uh, and then the changes in kinetic and potential energies of the system have to be negligible and the any process that, that the system might undergo uh, any change of thermodynamic state the system might undergo those or that process or those change of states have to be a quasi equilibrium and internally reversible, okay? uh, which means inside the system boundary there cannot be any entropy generation or there cannot be any irreversibilities. Okay. So, under this, so this seems to be this might seem like very restrictive, but we will see that uh, the, the final relation that we get out of this by combining first and second law is will be quite general although it might at the beginning seem very restrictive. So, and after all make taking all these assumptions, let us assume that the system changes state uh, from 1 to 2. So, state 1 was the initial state and state 2 is the final state and let us say that this is an infinitesimally small change in state. So, infinitesimally small change in state from 1 to 2. Okay. So, that means the temperature, pressure, specific energy, specific internal energy, uh, specific entropy, specific volume, these things only change differentiably by a small amount. So, under that condition, let us apply the first law. Okay. So, uh, the first law 
uh, can be written as this. So again, remember that we can write down the work work as work done by the system as PDV because of these three and uh, these three assumptions and the quasi equilibrium process assumption. All right. And by the way, this is uh, valid for the entire system. We are not writing for uh, unit mass of the system. Okay. This is valid for the entire system. If the system has to have, I mean, if the system happens to have mass of one kilogram, then these will be specific properties. Okay. But in general, they are not. Then let us write second law. So the second law tells us that the change in ent change in entropy of the system that is ds is equal to del q internally reversible by t and uh, this is we know that there is no entropy generation because the process is internally reversible so there is no entropy generation and this relation of course has been discussed previously so this equation 2 tells us about the change in entropy of the system okay and remember that this t is the temperature of that point of the system boundary through which heat is coming into the system or going out of the system so for example if heat is coming like this okay this is let's say delta q then uh, t will be the temperature of this point on exactly Okay. But again, if the system has to be in equilibrium, uh, then uh, we can without loss of generality assume that the entire system is at a uniform temperature. In that case, uh, the T will be the same as the system temperature itself. So, uh, so let us combine 1 and 2 uh, or rather I can what I can do is I can write this relation as Tds equal to uh, del Q internally reversible and I can now combine 1 and 2 and you can easily see that uh, I can write by combining 1 and 2 which is what I am doing is I am combining first law and the second law. This is what first law tells me, this is what second law tells me. I can combine the two and I can write Tds is equal to du plus Pdv. Now let us try to understand when or when or for what kind of processes is this statement valid. See or this, this relation is valid. See we have derived this relation assuming the process to be quasi equilibrium and internally reversible okay. uh, and there are many there were many other assumptions but the, mo the, the two most central assumptions uh, which allowed us to write these two equations are quasi equilibrium process and internally reversible process. So you might be tempted to think that this is only valid when a system is undergoing a process which is uh, quasi equilibrium and internally reversible. But see that is not true. So if you look closely you will see that this relation or this equation is basically a relation between uh, change, uh, change in st uh, state properties of the system. I will repeat that this equation is basically a relation between change in state properties of the system. It tells you, it talks about or it tells you how the entropy of a system changes given uh, change in internal energy and change in specific and change in volume. Okay. So all of these quantities P, D, V, D, U, etc. all these quantities they represent state properties right which means the change in those state properties are independent of the process that the system is undergoing. So if I fix the state 1 that is the initial state and if I fix the state 2 which is the final state then it does not matter how the system goes from state 1 to state 2. The ds for this change of state will be fixed, du for this change of state will be fixed, dv for this change of state will be fixed. And if it is an infinitesimally small change, then I can assume that P and T approximately remain constant throughout, right. So the change in pressure and temperature is very small uh, and uh, or rather throughout the process the temperature and pressure remain constant and uh, what then I can conclude is that because 
these quantities ds, du, dv, etc. these quantities they are independent of the change of, of, of the particular process that the system is undergoing. They only depend on the final and on the final and the initial states which is why I can conclude that this relation is valid for all processes regardless of whether the process is quasi equilibrium or not, regardless of whether the process is internally reversible or not. So, this is valid for all processes. Uh, for all processes for first of all. So, there are still some assumptions. So, of course, uh, the other assumptions that we have taken here. So, for example, closed system, simple compressible pure substance. See, these are not going anywhere, these stays. Okay. So, these assumptions have to be satisfied, but what we are doing is we are getting rid of these two assumptions. We will see that once we have derived this relation, although we have derived it assuming the process to be quasi equilibrium and internally reversible because this is just merely a relation between change in state properties. <coughs> we do not need these two uh, assumptions anymore because they talk about spe specific processes and change in state properties are independent of specific processes given that the initial and the final states are fixed, but the other assumptions remain. So, I uh, will write them down uh, just for a clarification. So, of course, we are talking about a closed system. Then second, uh, the system has to have or the substance that the system comprises of has to be simple, compressible, pure. Then uh, only boundary work. and uh, delta k e and delta p e have to be negligible. See these, these uh, assumptions go, go nowhere, they are they stay the same, but uh, the assumption of quasi equilibrium and internally reversible process goes out of the window. So, this is valid for all processes meaning uh, whether the process is equilibrium or not or whether the process is internally reversible or not this relation is valid provided we are talking about a closed system made up of simple compressible pure substance, any simple compressible pure substance and provided that only boundary work is involved and also given that the changes in kinetic and potential energies can be neglected. So, this can, can, uh, can be very non-intuitive because you know we have derived it assuming uh, uh, you know quasi equilibrium and internally reversible process assumption by taking that assumption. However, after derivation we end up saying that or end up looking at the equation and then concluding that this has to be valid for all processes. So, this relation let me so point out this relation is called as Gibbs equation, Gibbs equation okay. okay so, let us end here for today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.